Hey Keith, normally I like your stuff a lot. In fact, your video about Trump's cabinet picks I posted to Facebook and Google+, and I'll leave a link to it in the description bar as well. But this video in question, you're acting like Alex Jones, and I'm going to explain how. We are at war with Russia. That's a pretty bold statement, Keith. Or perhaps more correctly, we have lost a war with Russia without a battle. That explanation doesn't really help. That's still a pretty extreme statement, Keith. We are no longer a sovereign nation. We are no longer a democracy. We are no longer a free people. We are the victims of a bloodless coup. So far, a bloodless coup engineered by Russia with, at best, the traitorous indifference of the Republican Party and Donald John Trump, a man who, to borrow a phrase from another December long ago, will live in infamy. What you're saying could be true, but you're stating this as a fact. In five weeks' time, unless desperate measures are taken, we will hand over the government to a man who lost the popular vote by more than Woodrow Wilson or Jimmy Carter won it. This is true. A man whom the Russians wanted to run our country for them, a man whom the Russians got to run our country for them, a man for whom the Russians interfered with our elections. This is not definitive. This is conjecture. Which, if we did it to another country, would be described as an act of war. If this is indeed what has occurred, then yes, that is true. And in this country, we have conceded defeat. Okay, Alex Jones, not enough information, lots of conjecture. Some experts, John Kasich's strategist, John Weaver for one, have compared this to Pearl Harbor. A lot of comparisons can be made, but first we have to prove that this has happened. Even the hard right ex-congressman Joe Walsh says Republican silence will be tantamount to treason. We can only hope, but we first have to prove that this is going on. Let me be clear about something, okay? I've had a worry in the back of my mind, but I have nothing to back it up, that some of the ways that our culture has changed represents Russian culture. I have no way of really backing it up, but it sure feels like Russia. But that's a completely emotional argument. And until we have enough proof of otherwise, then that's all it is. As some of you may or may not recall, earlier this year, I had talked about how some of this SJW stuff almost seems like it's a weapon brought against this country. And if it's done in the form of media, I mean, this whole thing makes sense if that's the case. But we have no proof of this yet. And if we do get proof of this, then, you know, <laughs> that'd be a pretty serious thing. But we need the proof. We need more facts. Some others, too, have proved courageous. Trump, self-destructive to the last, issued a childish statement mocking the CIA, but as Tim Dickinson of Rolling Stone noted, not denying anything. But the vast majority of Republicans have said nothing, and the vast majority of Democrats have said nothing, and the vast majority of the media has said nothing of substance, and the president has said nothing close to enough. The CIA and FBI and Homeland Security, the institutions whose interest in freedom we on the left most frequently distrust, they have said something. And now suddenly we're going to trust them? Why? They said it first to congressional and Senate Republicans in September. Dire warnings, warnings that Mitch McConnell and other Republicans reportedly buried, warnings that the Russians, using computer hacking and perhaps other means, were not merely trying to discredit the election, but to achieve the specific outcome of electing their man Trump. The reason why we stopped trusting the CIA about this sort of thing has nothing to do with Republicans or Democrats. It's not a partisan thing. It wouldn't have mattered who was in office in 2003, the CIA tried to shove forth that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, and it's never been shown that they did. Now, there's a chance that they could have, but, I mean, we could have had anyone in office and they still would have said the same thing. And finally, at the very last hour, some of those who did those briefings and some of those who received those briefings leaked the details to the New York Times, the Washington Post, CBS News, Reuters, in a torrent of anguished honesty. They said something. They said something as the president not-elect began to veer towards appointing as Secretary of State, as our diplomatic face to the world, the CEO of Exxon who four years ago received the Order of Friendship from Vladimir Putin. It's fine to try to find patterns in things, but to make absolute declarations like this is very Alex Jones. That's the stuff that Alex Jones does. 
We need more information. They said something as the members of the Electoral College prepared to gather next Monday to finalize this coup. Some, perhaps unaware that almost half the states they represent permit them by law to vote for someone other than the candidate to whom they are pledged, and that only 38 of them need to do so to prevent this coup. Well, I hope they do the right thing. I hope they do what they know is right in their conscience. They said something, as one especially chilling detail in one of the reports sailed by, that, quote, the Russians hacked the Republican National Committee's computer systems in addition to their attacks on Democratic organizations, but did not release whatever information they gleaned from the Republican networks. Proof. We need proof of this. It is a short leap from that conclusion, and it is anything but a conspiracy theory to be wondering if the Russians hacked the RNC and have kept what they found there to make sure Trump and the Republicans obeyed. When we don't have enough proof of this, it is indeed a conspiracy theory. The President of the United States, who at this rate will be the last freely elected President of the United States, made in his measured way a small gesture last Friday that perhaps opened the door to these horrifying revelations of a coup by an outside power nearly complete. He asked for a full review, but we do not have time for a full review. The quicker this can be done, the better. But to say that we don't have time? I don't know whether that's true or not. Barack Obama has twice stood in front of America, in front of the world, in front of history, and said, I do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Today is the time for him to do so. He must immediately declassify and release all relevant materials held by the FBI, the CIA, DHS, and the other intelligence and security services, and in the White House, and anywhere else in government. And the Attorney General must immediately appoint a special prosecutor to investigate what Donald Trump knew, and when he knew it, and what, if any, collusive links exist now or existed earlier between the Russian Federation and the Republican National Committee. It would be nice if Obama did that, but we all know that's probably not going to happen. We still need more proof. If Trump does grab power, he can try to dismiss that special prosecutor, but he will at least have to get the courts to sanction him. And most immediately, the intelligence briefing proposed today for the Electoral College, what the CIA and the others know, when they knew it, how much the Trump campaign knew, that must be conducted without delay and without redactions. So should we have went to war with Iraq? There are no arguments of security or face saving or intelligence secrecy or national interest that carry any weight now. Keith, have you ever considered that this whole thing could be just a conspiracy theory? Have you considered that? Probably not. How much worse can it get by telling America the unvarnished, unprocessed, unredacted truth about this coup? Oh, I don't know. Civil war, civil unrest, martial law, mass hysteria, you know, that type of thing. We are already on the precipice of losing the freedom and independence of the nation. Only if this is true. We don't know if this is true. Dogs don't know it's not bacon. He must tell us so that we may defend ourselves. He must tell the electors of the Electoral College so that microscopic as the chance may be, they could still prevent this cataclysm. There is no time for a full review or a measured analysis or recommendations to prevent interference in our future elections because permitting Donald Trump to assume the office of president reduces the chance that we will have any future elections. And I thought Zinnia Jones had become hysterical. I thought that I had become hysterical, but this is pretty over the top, Keith. The nation and all of our freedoms hang by a thread, and the military apparatus of this country is about to be handed over to scum who are beholden to scum, Russian scum. You sound like a Republican from the Cold War era. As things are today, January 20th will not be an inauguration, but rather the end of the United States as an independent country. It will not be a peaceful change of power. It will be a usurpation, and the usurper has no validity, no credibility, and no authority under the Constitution. This is a reality that will become the only reality until this country rids itself of Donald John Trump. He is not a president. He is a puppet put in power by Vladimir Putin. And those who ignore these elemental existential facts, Democrats or Republicans, are traitors to this country and will immediately and forever after be held accountable. Resist. Peace. If Keith is right, yes, this is horrible, and yes, this is all the things that he says. But we don't 
have enough evidence. We don't have enough facts. We don't have enough proof. We can't be pushing this Alex Jones type of shit. Okay, it will be viewed as fake news. You cannot put out fake news, tabloid-style news, and expect to be taken seriously.